right. Good morning. <clears throat> so my name is Matthias Wicker, and I'm also a professor in the computer science department. And um, today I want to give you a very brief overview into one of the, the core ideas in my research agenda, uh, which I call deep media. So this is really the idea of using AI techniques for um, digital visual media design. So you probably know that um, digital visual media, they're everywhere uh, in, our, in, our, in our life. This uh, ranges from applications in the movie industry, computer games, scientific visualization, medical imaging, AR, VR, product design and architecture. Um, so this is really a, a huge application area with a very large industry um, that uh, produces this type of content. But unfortunately, creating these visual media with computer tools is still very expensive in many cases today. And my research uh, community is in computer graphics, and we are really the technical community that develops you know, algorithms and so on um, to build these tools. And this ranges from sophisticated 3D modeling and animation tools, photorealistic rendering systems, image editing processing, and so on. So unfortunately today, um, most of these tools, they still require experts to use them. And they also require intense manual work. And this leads to very large production costs for, for some of these types of media. For example, uh, CG movies can easily cost in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So while we have been very successful in the sense uh, that, we, that the research community has developed tools, that allow users to basically create any image they can imagine. Um, while we can do this today, this is still very expensive and, and sometimes very, very slow. So the research vision that I want to briefly uh, highlight in this presentation today is AI-based digital media creation. This is where we want to go. And the idea here is, in a nutshell, that the user in such a system will provide very simple, high-level input and the AI system then fills in the details. So, um, yeah, of course this is a, a little bit vague here, but you can imagine that maybe in a few years we'll be able to, to direct such systems with natural language input and really at a very high level um, uh, guide a system to produce the media that, that the user imagines. Now, of course, I think the benefits of this would be quite clear. We could uh, create such media much faster and uh, more cheaply, um, and this would democratize visual storytelling, really. It would broaden access to low-budget producers, maybe small studios, and individuals that could really uh, create very convincing, lifelike um, media very quickly and, and, and cheaply. And such new technology could also support and enable new types of media, of course, for example, AR, VR, or maybe even other, other types of visual media that are to be developed. So what I want to do uh, in my presentation now is give you just a very, very uh, brief example, just one example of our work that goes in this direction. So this is a project that we um, presented last year at the SIGGRAPH conference. And the idea here is to build a system that allows intuitive editing of face images using very simple user input. So here you have a face and the idea is that you would like to modify it by changing the hairline and, and filling in the eye. And all the user provides in this system are these rough sketches that you see here. So this is a sketch-based interface. And the highlighted region is the region that the AI system is supposed to fill in with appropriate content. And when you run the system, it will produce an output that looks like this. So <clears throat> yeah, this is really kind of a, a typical application of neural artificial neural network training, where we build a system that is trained on thousands of examples. So we create training data automatically um, from uh, photographic images, where we uh, create user sketches in, a, in an automatic way using an algorithm. So the, the sketch input that you see here is produced automatically, and we also remove parts of the image uh, basically randomly and replace it with the sketch. And then the neural network is trained to basically recover the original input image. And the neural network here has millions of adjustable knobs that will tweak during training um, to try to adjust the system so it, so it produces the desired output, which we know because this is the original image. 
So in this, this is just a little more detail about the training. You see an original image, then the input that we create, the network that produces an output, and this is not perfect because we are still training, and we are trying to compare this to the original input and make it as similar as possible because that's uh, yeah what we want to achieve in the end. Now, one of the uh, the key concepts here is to minimize this loss, this this difference between the the input and output over all training examples. And the key research challenge is really that a pixel-wise loss here leads to artifacts. So the naive idea would basically be to say that the output image should match the input on a pixel-by-pixel -pixel basis. All the pixels need to be the same. But um, this doesn't work, and maybe one intu intuition why it doesn't is that if you provide this input that has only a rough sketch, then the, the output is really underdetermined, and the network can never precisely recover each pixel of the input, which it hasn't seen. So we are asking too much in a sense, and we need to develop other loss uh, functions to quantify the, this difference between the original uh, input and what we produce. So this is really one of the research challenges here. But I want to show you a video uh, where you see this system in action. So the user first marks a region that is supposed to be edited and then indicates with a few uh, sketch strokes how this should be changed. So the user here changes the shapes of the eyes and um, can also change the colors of the eye, adds a few more edges uh, that will produce a bit more contrast in the image, change the eyebrows, and now we can ab apply some makeup. And the system interactively modifies the image right away. So <clears throat> on the right side here, you see the result, which is pretty photorealistic. And you can imagine if you uh, had to use traditional Photoshop tools to do this, this would take you probably uh, an hour or so. I don't know. I'm not very good at Photoshop, but um, maybe you could do this in an hour. With this system, you can do it in, in a couple of minutes. So of course, um, we are also working on other forms of media besides images. Uh, we work on 3D objects and scenes, uh, which we want to reconstruct from images, or we want to provide analysis, automatic synthesis, and interactive editing. So somewhat similar to the image editing system I showed you, but applied to objects and scenes. We also, uh, of course, want to be able to create animations and uh, dynamic objects and scenes, and we are also looking into rendering, so efficient photorealistic rendering and rendering for AR and VR applications. These are still um, open research problems in the sense that for real-time rendering in a VR uh, environment, we still cannot do this in a truly photorealistic manner using light transport simulation. So there are still um, research challenges there also. Now, one of the key issues when you work on these uh, deep learning type uh, uh, methods is that you, re you need training data. And often, creating the training data is a challenge. In our example, we automatically created the training data. Um, and we managed to do this in a way so it generalizes to actual um, user sketches. But very often, it would be much more convenient if you would not need this type of known input-output relationship and pre present all that data to the system. So this is called unsupervised learning. And um, yeah. This is a, an area that we're also interested in, interested in will, because it will make these systems much more practical when you don't need all this uh, annotated training data. So that's basically it from my side. If you're interested in this type of research, uh, please go to my website where you see uh, more of my research and publications. And I'm also teaching a graduate class, um, not this fall, but next spring again. This is called uh, CMSC 740 advanced computer graphics. Thank you. Thank you.